everybody. We're going to be talking to a special guest, Clara Crawley, Bachelorette number 16. Uh, 10 seasons on The Bachelor. She's dealt with explant surgery and autoimmune issues, including alopecia and, um, and um, uh, eczema. And we are going to be talking specifically about her journey. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a powerful conversation. If you give us a bunch of likes here and if you can actually uh, hit the button, send this out to a friend. This is something you're going to want to hear. You're going to want to send out to somebody. Hi, Neelam. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Come on in. Say where you're from as you come in. Um, and if you're dealing with autoimmune issues or you've dealt with autoimmune issues, just put it in the comments here. Again, we're Claire Crawley from, she is bachelorette number 16. And she is a 29 degree grandmaster Pisces of all the things that are out there. This is super powerful. Looking forward to uh, having this conversation. We, uh, we, we've been working with Claire uh, recently and, and I've been talking to her about her desire to help women. And she has such a massive following of young women who have followed her journey for over a decade. And, uh, and we're gonna get a chance. Uh, Claire is our favorite, yay. Hi, Claire. Hi, Gary, how's it going? It's, it's going fantastic. Man, you actually look different from last week. Could it help with the haircut? <laughs> <laughs> Physically, I'm different, but yes, I feel so different. Like, so different. Wow. So, so uh, I know everybody knows you from The Bachelorette, mm -hmm. and you're ten, 10 years on The Bachelorette, or Bachelor, right. And, right. and you're The Bachelorette season 16, if I'm right, right? It was, yeah. And one plus six is seven, and you're a Pisces. So your birthday is 22nd of March, right? 20th. Oh, 20th of March, but you are 29 degree Pisces. So you're a grand master Pisces and you have so much mastery in your chart. <laughs> it's, it, it's amazing when I look at your chart, you're at 29 degree in your emotions too. That's how you live for 10 years on The Bachelor, I think. It's because you have all this internal fortitude, this strength. Uh, well, thank you. I mean, I feel like you can't really make it through without strength. You can't make it through 10 years of The Bachelor without some strength. So I, I'll take that. <laughs> So Claire, um, so so a little bit of your journey, like, um, like uh, how first of all, how did you find Human Garage? I've always deeply been into health and wellness, and just kind of searching for my people online, for my community online, and what resonates with me. And Google searches, I always have known there's kind of a different way than just what doctors say when it comes to health and wellness. And so seeking out my people and kind of reaching out and you know, following one, following the other, and just feeling what resonates with me and what always resonated and has resonated with me is um, just being able to do, do the work and listen to our guts and fight for ourselves versus just taking, taking an answer of what a doctor says. So actually sitting there in the late night scrolls of insomnia and not sleeping and feeling crappy of just going, if nobody's going to help me, how can I help myself? Right. And, and so, so yeah, so you, you when we talked, I, and, and I, I just want to say, first of all, I deal with a lot of celebrities, mm. obviously, and very few of them are really authentic in my, in my opinion. And, and out of all of them, you are the most authentic that I've ever met. And that makes me feel so good. Thank you so much for saying that. Well, it, you know, it, and it, because they, they paint a certain picture about you yeah. uh, in, in The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, don't, I, I personally don't think now meeting you that that picture is exactly accurate. Well, I appreciate that. That's what, everybody who knows me says the same thing. They're like, who is that or what's that person? But it's, it's a small snippet. It's moments of, you know, in the moment I'm like, I honestly, to me, for a long time, I was like, is that me? Is that who I am? And I kind of owned it for a long time, but I think about it now and it's, it's a portion of me, what you see, but you see defensive, protective, fighting for myself, Claire, that is just on guard, which is a portion of me, but it's not where my heart is and who I am and who just I am at my core. So thank you for seeing that. And I, I know my people who are in my everyday life feel it and see it. So it means a lot that you see it too, because I can't show up as anything other than myself, really. So what, what, what made you actually finally reach out to us? It was that, I was telling you, it was at one of the lowest points 
of frustration of dealing with healthcare systems and dealing with my body and truly going through so many tests and blood works and how can I help myself? Um, that, like I said, I've always followed you and just love your content and it, it resonates with me. And you, you are so real and you, without wanting anything or needing anything, you're saying like, buy this, do this, you need this to do this. It's your own body for yourself. Like we, you're in enabling people to help themselves. And that is so inspiring to me. So you, so, so you got caught up at that low point in your life Okay, what are we talking about here? What are we dealing with? What's the low point? What does that look like? Oh, okay. So where do we start, I guess? But basically, for a while, I was dealing with my breast implants and dealing with the after the the after effects of what comes afterwards, the detoxing of your system. And for some reason, I was coming coming across. You know, I'm I'm should be right. Right now, I take such good care of my health. I'm on top of how I eat and how I feel good and mentally and everything. Like, I'm trying my hardest to be on top of everything, but my body has just been having these rashes and kind of like screaming at me for some reason. And I'm trying to listen to my body, trying to see what it says, doing all the blood work, doing doing what I can to help it, but I, I couldn't feel like I get to the root of it. And when I see you talk online and when I see you share things, it's not just you're showing you're talking about symptoms but that's not like it's not how do i say this it's just a side effect right. of what is going on inside yeah and so i was like you know when you're at a low point i was i was telling ryan the other day i was in the closet sobbing like what help like telling my body like help me help me and something just you were online and i just messaged you and was like oh i would do anything to work with you and i would do anything to just you know, uh, um, have time with you. You know, it, it's because, I mean, at the time, uh, so you went, and let's talk about that. So a lot of women today go get implants. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it's like, it's become the normal thing. It's kind of like adding fingernails. And, and not that fingernails are good either, but, 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 they, but implants. And, and how long have you, when did you actually do your implants? Um, I had them for eight years. I did them in, it was right after I was on The Bachelor for the first time. Right after that is when I got them. Yeah, and, and what, and out of here, so let's, uh, on the emotional side, what was the driving force to do it? Like, what was it that you were dealing with that made you say that I wanted to go do surgery to put something in? Yeah, I think it was just many years of not, truthfully, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy a lot of me it was a lot of emotional for me it wasn't a lot of a physical thing i think i didn't on the physical level i didn't feel as feminine maybe and i always thought that i wasn't being chosen is there something like is there something about me and i felt like that was one thing that i went to that felt like maybe if i do this i'll feel more feminine maybe if i do this i'll be more attractive and it just was a mindset for me, especially coming off The Bachelor, where you are just shredded to a million pieces for who you are physically and emotionally. So it was just a point where I was like, maybe this will help it. It's kind of reaching for something that maybe is external. When you, when you actually got the implants in the first place, how did it make you feel? Did it actually fill that hole or that void or... Instantly, I, I remember the day after I got them, I called my doctor and I said, how soon can I get these out? Whoa. The so you, you literally felt like, like something was wrong. Yeah. It, it just, it didn't, not only did I feel like something was wrong because you're adjusting to surgery and it just didn't feel good, but it felt mentally to me like I felt defeated. Like, oh, I wasn't good enough. And this is. This is the extent I would do, cut my body open, cut my muscles open, leave them as flaps and tuck something foreign up under them to like be wanted. Like it just didn't feel, it made me sad. It made me sad to have them. So I, to be honest, always covered them up. But a lot of people were like, we didn't even know you got them or when you got them because I always wore sports bras and covered them up. Wow, so you went to the work to get them, and you still covered them up. So, so basically, it wasn't addressing the issue, okay? 
Yeah. So that and that and and I, and I believe this. You know, I've I've worked around um, implants. Obviously, having my clinic in Hollywood, it's like one of the number one things I was dealing with women. But when did you start? But this? It was was one of the number of things. We're changing yeah. the game. Yes, absolutely. And I and I and I appreciate you for being here to talk about it because I don't think it's I don't we don't, we talk about the the what it looks like and what it feels like, but there's not enough people say, talking about the other side. And it takes a big step for you to step out on your platform and say to women, "Hey, I want to come. I want to tell you what the other side is. This is why I. This is why I, I love you so much because you are you're literally willing to share that part of it, which a lot of people just aren't. They'll just do it quietly and go away, like like you said, defeat it. Yeah, but here's the thing, though, Gary. Is like this to me. It was taking them out and making the decision to take them out. I know. I mean, I get women in my inboxes all the time, like mentally like I'm attached to them or I feel like I don't feel feminine or womanly or like I feel like I need them and I want so bad I hear them and I hear them screaming and every time I hear them screaming and being like I don't know if I'm strong enough to do this I don't know if I like finding reasons like should I like questioning it I want to put it out there in the world so bad because everything in my heart is like I would have never known how good I feel emotionally and as a woman and empowered as I feel if I hadn't taken them out and it is one of the most greatest like acts of self-love I've ever done for myself was making that decision to say regardless of what anybody else sees or thinks or feels I'm choosing me above everybody I'm choosing my health I'm choosing my happiness and my body over what anybody thinks and feels about me and it was just it is the greatest feeling alive. It is so empowering to say, I'm doing this for myself. It's kind of like saying no to a, ba to a bachelor. Yeah. yeah because you want to, because <laughs> totally. you, you're doing it for yourself, right? Totally. I mean, first of all, I have, uh, I have yet to hear anybody say that because I don't think the social situations allow them to. But that's interesting I, when you said, I feel empowered because, and I, I, I agree with you. You feel like I'm doing something for me. It's the right thing for me. Yeah. yeah. And I think getting them in was external and getting them out was internal for me. It was wow. all about the, the perception of people. And for me, it was my perception out and how I feel. And I've never felt more feminine. I've never felt more beautiful in my body and just how I feel and going like, thank you, body. Thank you for, you know, showing because when I had them in, I mean, we've talked about it so many symptoms my body just felt i mean i had dark circles the the effects that breast implants cause just innately by being foreign objects in your body what they do to your body that uh, people attribute to oh i have dark circles because of lack of sleep or maybe i'm stressed or maybe it's hormones there's so many symptoms that breast implants cause by being in your body that people just attribute or maybe even want to attribute and don't want to be like maybe it is my implants so they don't make the connection so I want to help women make the connection of like, you have no idea how good you can be feeling without them and what your body is just fighting for you. So what, what are some of the, what were some of the, how did it start to come on? Like, where were the symptoms? Like, was it a, a cascade? Did it all happen at once or did they slowly build? No, it was slowly, slowly. Um, but essentially I started getting little rashes. And what I was recognizing, I mean, I didn't know now at the time, but at the time my body was basically saying, I've got too much of an overload going on right here fighting these. Because your body, every single woman who gets breast implants, regardless if you have no issues with them, your body forms a shell around them. All your white blood cells go and form a shell, a capsule around the implant to protect your body by saying, this is foreign, let's create this shell. Every single woman has a shell around their implant that is created by their body's natural cells. So your body's fighting that. So when it's fighting so hard for that, if you have any, any little disease in your body, any little, any little thing that your body else needs to fight, like a rash or a cold or anything going on in your body, it doesn't have all the energy to go fight that. So it's already fighting so hard against your implants. So you're more susceptible to colds, you're more susceptible to the rashes, so I started getting those little things, just the rashes. And I'm like, I used to have, I used to wash my face with, you know, whatever. And I would be fine. And it started just reactive and allergic to different things. And then I started getting, realizing I was tired all the time, sleeping more, needing more sleep, needing more rest. And it just kind of 
piled up to it was like, like what is going on? This is not the Claire I was before. I was had no problems before. This is not who I was. So, so the, so you had the, you had the rashes starting, the tiredness, the dark circles in the eyes. Mm. And, and then that leads to that's, that's usually because you said you're fighting. There's yeah. plastic in there where, you know, like people are so worried about not putting plastic in their water bottles and plastic and, and all that. And I don't care what anybody says. Uh, our bodies take the energetic signature from plastic. It doesn't matter if it's BPA free or whatever. It still has an effect. It's also something energetically blocking your heart. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that. When I, when I got my in, there was, there was always something right here when I would lift my arm. I used to be a, a I loved rock climbing. And when they cut those muscles right here, a lot of times when they cut them to put my will put in right here, yeah. they cut those muscles, stuff the implant under it and leave the muscle just flapping over it. Cause it's not tight enough to pull over. So they just leave that muscle loose. And I had right here, I felt like it was a nerve, but it was like something was something directly coming into my body was cut. And I mean, if you're talking about the heart, you're, yeah, you're hiding that you're putting stuff over that. And it's like you said, energetically, even it's not good. Yeah. On top of there, that's actually on top of the muscle is the fascia, which is the heart meridian, which comes in there. And yeah. how, by the way, how does that feel right now? I can do everything. It feels so good. <laughs> I feel so, so loose. <laughs> I, just, I feel so good. My body feels so open. It feels so good right now. It's amazing what a little bit of fascial work will do for that, right? Yeah. I mean, so, it's, it's amazing. So, okay. So, um, so the, the next part is, is that the, 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 this, what a lot of women are experiencing around right now, it's, it's, it's seeping leakage and the body's rejection. So it starts to fight it in an autoimmune uh, function. Correct. So one of the causes, uh, some of the things are uh, intestinal anxiety, depression, cold hands, cold feet. Um, uh, eczema is one of them. And another one is alopecia. Mm -hmm. So the hair loss. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It's huge. It's so huge. I mean, people, and, and it's, I think a lot of times, like I said, women will talk about, oh, I love my implants. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, and that's okay. I mean, no, no judgment on my behalf of what they're comfortable with. But I think when you start looking at, oh, I am losing my hair. Oh, this is my, I am having intestinal problems. Oh, this, and you're kind of starting to put the pieces together. I just kind of want to put it out there as a voice of like, put the pieces together for yourself, fight for yourself and recognize your body's potential of what it wants for you and what it, should be functioning like yeah and, and, and you're right because there are some people that are not having any symptoms yeah and, and if you're not Definitely having any it's not going on just that it's they're implants all, all are whether they're silicone whether they're saline they all have the same thing and do the same thing in the body some people are just lucky yeah and and the other part too is there's a lot of people that don't notice that they're having symptoms until they're a bigger one yeah that's my experience Tell your body. because she's like, ah! yeah. <laughs> so, so digestion issues. Um, yeah. and it, how long did it start to show up like in skin behavior, like eczema and then, and then hair loss and stuff like that. How long did that take? The eczema was the first thing. Um, but just over the, over the eight years that I had them, it really just got worse and worse. And I, like I said, I'm somebody that's very, very proactive with my health. So I was going to all the doctors. I was going, getting blood works. I was, luckily I have access to it and I'm so lucky to feel like have that, but to the doctors, I was ruling out every test. Could it be this? Could it be that? I mean, there's so many things where I was like, give me, give me an answer to this. Give me an answer to it. And every single doctor was kind of like, you're crazy. Your blood works this. I mean, it, there was a lot of like, your white blood cells are really high and your body's fighting something, but you know, no, not real, no answers. And so that's when I just kind of was like, okay, well, I'm trying to think who even brought it up to me, but I think it was the online community of like, have you ever thought about this? And I looked in, you know, breast implant illness and I looked into that and I thought, this is what, 
this is what my body's going through. And I, you know, it was the decision of like, what if you take him out? What if it doesn't solve anything? What if it doesn't help anything? How long, how long was that contemplation period? Oh, that was about a year. And I thought I'm going to rule out every single test I can to make sure it's nothing else. Because at the, I was like, I went through so much to get him in and still kind of attached to that identity of like, right, right. You know, their boobs <laughs> and they were beautiful, but in, but you know, if it comes well, from my health, from, you know? a, from a, from a male standpoint, <clears throat> when um, implants came out, I used to, I initially thought, well, this is actually, yeah, it looks good. But then after a while, what I noticed was it just goes back to how I feel about you anyways, or how I feel about the person. And, and if I feel, if I feel that the energy and the, that's what I love about you is that the energy, it's the bubbly, it's the energy, it's the Claire, it's the, I'm in charge. I'm not going to take any bullshit from anybody. <laughs> that's, that's the part of you that, that is attractive. And, and everything else is just something that my eye validates with it anyways. It's a psychological game for both sides. 100 percent because i can tell you when i had them in and i was in relationships and i thought ah oh, they're gonna love him i've never felt more unattractive and unwanted in some really some of those relationships and then it was when i got with my husband and i he he actually i had still had my bandages on when i had met my husband and to this day he's like oh my god it's you're so beautiful you're i don't how could you have ever had anything other than this it's so beautiful, and I, it just feels so, I'm like, I love it. I love it. He, so, he, he's, he, I love you know, from my short interactions, he's such an awesome guy. It's like you said, he's along for whatever it is, right? Yeah, for sure. He just loves it. He loves it. And he's always said, too, he's like, healthy Claire, happy Claire is what's attractive. That's what we love. That's what is people are attracted to. It's like, you know, if you're not feeling good and you're feeling like crap, I don't care how cool, how beautiful the boobs are. Like it's not worth it. Right, right, right. Yeah, because healthy and happy, Claire. That's what he. That's what he wanted. Because at the end of it, that's what we want. Is we want a relationship where things are fun and happy. It's not about the looks at the end. It really isn't. Totally. Yeah, totally. and and I, I think a lot of people they they if they come into a relationship just for looks, eventually that's going to collapse because there's no foundation of friendship, caring, support, liking. And you guys, you guys, I mean, I looked at your, both of your astrology. You guys are like two peas in a pod. You were meant to be together. <laughs> I told him that the other day and he was like, I knew, obviously I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> so how, and how did this happen? So that, that's a funny thing. So out of all the bachelor, all the, all the 10 years of trying to find and, and all this, how did you end up with Brian? He lives an hour from my house and he just slid into my DMs with a little message and was just, normal and wonderful and sweet and we developed a friendship and he was just normal yeah. and not wanting fame and not wanting all the big stuff and could care less to this day he could care less about it all and it's just um wants a normal happy relationship and is amazing with it so what are the odds of that right i go through all this but i think too i'm like it kind of took going through all that for me to become who i am for me to like find my voice to find my place of like I can speak up for myself and to feel empowered to speak up kind of to find my life's passion to speak to other people about things that are shameful that we don't talk about. I like to put a voice to the things people don't talk about that make everybody human. I know I had that platform of the bachelor and it was great. And it's the celebrity world and all this, but to me, it's a platform to speak as Claire who's just like everybody else. I, I would love to at some point take women who are really struggling with these core issues if you're open to it and like just the two of us talk to them. 100%. Would you be open? Yeah, because you know, I, I think that's the real value. It's the value that that you've gone through this experience and, and, and I know that the, the saying, I don't know if you know the, the British saying, if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. You're, you're that one, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it all the way. I am. That's it's, I don't know any other way. And, 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 and that's, what's, that's what's the most admirable thing about you is that you embody the whole experience. And, and I, I, think it's, I think it's a lot of social pressure, whether it's implants or whether it's fashion or whether it's hairstyles or whatever, there's a lot of social um, pressure on women, 
and there always has been. I mean, there is on guys too, but but not the same as it is on women. There's a lot of social pressure for for women to look a certain way, to act a certain way, to adapt, or be quiet a certain way, or talk a certain way. And and I think you break all the norms because you have this 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 lifestyle and this this presentation that looks like somebody who should be fitting that mold and you're just willing to break it at any second yeah i i i don't know i i think to me it's just because i was on a tv show doesn't make me any different it doesn't make me any different i mean it's a great opportunity but it, it's i'm still internally i still go through the things and the experiences i'm not like a robot or anybody that is this untouchable thing that people hold on platforms you know like you look up to celebrities or you look up like oh they've got this life or they've got that but at the core if i have the traumas and the emotional things and the struggles and the fight for myself that everybody else has within them so to me it's like i i want that a lot of times i want to be a mirror for other people to say like i want them to see themselves in me and to go oh, i feel that or i've been there i know what that's like and to know that like we were talking about it if i feel like if i can do it and if i can fight for myself anybody can because i've been at the lowest i've been depression and you know low self-worth shame i felt all the emotions as well so uh, a common thing because we're on the back end of this we're hearing people trying to seek advice on this mm -hmm. and also people trying to deal with with what's already happened so one of the things that we get a lot is is young women saying, my boyfriend's telling me I need to have breast implants. I'm scared. What do yeah. you say to that young girl? Find, find a new boyfriend. <laughs> find a new boyfriend because I don't care. That's, ugh, ugh. Like, to me, if anybody tells you that, no that's the biggest no red flag there is nothing anybody needs to fix about themselves ever and the only work that needs to be done is for ourselves by ourselves and when we're ready that's nobody's place if if they're making you feel unworthy it's not the right man for you i mean that comes to a lot of a lot of abuse and stuff like that that happens around that my friend on here she said, "Explant the boyfriend with the, with the implants. <laughs> Get rid of him. <laughs> Here, you do it. Exactly. Well, men can do it now. So it's like, hey, it's equal rights, right? Hey, to each their own. But yeah, I, if, if you're going to get rid of something, get rid of the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, another one is, um, is I, I'm starting to have symptoms of anxiety rashes rosacea i'm starting to have these symptoms where do i go what do i do do i run to my doctor do i do i go on a diet what should i do from my personal experience i would say take some time to sit with your emotions see what it is it weigh weigh it out what your symptoms are write out what your symptoms are on a list see if it's if it's something that resonates with you to me it was always this deep gut feeling of could it be my implants could it be my implants? it's the only factor like i factored everything else out it was the only factor of like what else do what else could it be you know and, and i wrote a list and i sat down reach out to people too. reach out to people like me there's other there's such a massive community of women that have had their implants taken out and i promise you i have not had one person of all the women who I've spoken with, not one person has said, I regret taking them out, even on the slight chance that that could be the problem. Not one. You know, that's, that, that's interesting, not one person, because not one. you have a lot of, lot of regrets going in, but yeah. not a lot of regrets going out. So truly, yeah. Somebody, somebody asked, uh, uh, did you feel better immediately after the explant? Oh, uh, I have, there's a picture I have on my Instagram of just physically how I felt. Well, there's a couple things on my Instagram, but physically how I felt was my, my eyes, they were the, my liver, you know, a sign of liver toxicity is graying of your eyes. And I didn't realize how gray the whites of my eyes were 
until I had taken him out and I looked at the same picture at the same spot in the window at the same time of day the next day, 24 hours after my explant, and my eyes were like sparkling and bright again. And you could physically see and the dark circles were gone. That was physically, but emotionally, I also posted like a pretty vulnerable video of as soon as I got out of surgery, I just said, you know, we can do the hard work and I feel like me again. And I truly, I felt like what I can say to women, and a lot of women say this, when they get out of surgery and they're waking up from surgery, they say, I feel like I can take a deep breath. And I didn't realize how shallow I was breathing with them. You know, like I can, I can that, breathe. That's an important point because I deal with the mechanics of the body. Mm -hmm. If you take and you put right now under a tight shirt, you put, you put two balls in there okay. and you breathe, you're going to have your stress levels go up within a matter of three minutes. And, and people are living with this every single minute of every day. Yeah, you don't realize over time how it does affect you and how just honestly taking them out, it's like, oh, it's the biggest wake up call of like, is this how I was breathing the whole time? And yeah, no, no wonder people are having anxiety. No wonder people are having literally that like tightening of their chest. It's because you physically have something there. It feels like an elephant when you wake up. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I've had, um, so I've actually, people always, they, I, I get, I get lambasted all the time for talking about women's issues. Like why is a man's claiming issues? I, mean, I, I said, because there's not enough women talking about it legitimately. Yeah. And, and I'm not a doctor, but I have all the medical experience. So I'm not protecting anybody, but I didn't tell you this actually. I've actually had the surgery. Swear. So, watch this. See that little white line underneath there? I can't see it. I can't see. I see. I see a nipple. I can't see under it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 And see the see the indentation right there. I do. And the, I do. And the white line. So I was a bodybuilder. I had bilateral gynecomastia. I had the nipple surgery the same as a breast implant. Wow. So. Wow. I can actually relate to what's going on. And I'm currently today in my life dealing with the symptoms because what goes through there is stomach. And then what comes under here is stomach and spleen. So that's worry and desire. I have been dealing with this for now. I had this done when I was 17 years old because I was going to go pro bodybuilding. So I've been dealing with this now for like almost 40 years. Uh. And I'm just now getting it back, my stomach, my thing. I had my face blow up here, uh, like a big, big blow up on my stomach channel, which is right through here on my left side, where I had the, the problem with the nipple replacement. It, it truly, they, I don't get Gary, why people, these are scientific, factual things. I don't get why more people are not talking about this and making the connection. Doctors. I've never, there's not a doctor I've heard speak up about this and talk about this and talk about the correlation and the connection between the meridians and between, it's scientific. This is all scientific stuff. So it's blowing my mind, truly the this, this stuff that is affecting. And if only we learn these things and know these things and just pay attention to these things, the connections make sense. You know, it's, um, we have a, I mean, we now have hundreds of thousands of doctors around the world following, but we're only, this program's only been out really for two and a half years. And we have 20 million people doing fashion maneuvers around the world. We have about three and a half million people following in different programs. And we have hundreds of thousands of people in the programs, but we now have about a half a million doctors of which about 30% are medical doctors that are now following this process and working and working to, to educate themselves in a new way. And I have a lot of respect for the doctors who are saying, okay, maybe I didn't get it all in school. I'm gonna go yeah. out and I'm gonna look a different way. I'm gonna embody this experience. And we, they're, they're coming to us. And, we, and, I, and all of you doctors out there who are doing that, I appreciate you so much because what we're talking about is, yeah, I had no idea. I have had stomach issues my entire life. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that it was my surgery to have my gynecomastia, my actual breast tissue removed. It's so true. I mean, exactly like you say too, even the doctor that took 
my implants now, Dr. Rankin, he, that's all he does. He does not put them in. Sorry, he say his name me. again. Dr. Rankin, he's based out of Florida. Dr. Um, and Dr. Rankin. Still Thank you, Dr. Rankin, for doing what you do, because I know that's difficult. You not only have to do the physical work, Yep. You have to do the emotional work too. There's a lot that goes along to doing this. It's not just cutting you open. Totally. And just simply for the fact of believing women and believing that, you know, like, like you were saying earlier, it's one thing for a man to feel, you know, you can, what does it really feel like? But he believes us. And to have a doctor believe you and to say, no, this is real. I'm seeing way too, I mean, way too many women with the exact same issues. I believe you. It, it is to feel seen and heard like that. The, I mean, there needs to be, the world is, needs more doctors like that because just to go above and beyond and not just a 15 minute, here's a prescription for you. It's hard. Yeah, a friend of mine used that doctor. Use Somebody who's uh, balancing Lotus says a friend of mine was using that doctor too. Yeah. Yeah. He's an amazing doctor. And he just, I mean, the follow ups, even, I mean, it was like on my one year anniversary of getting them out, he was like, a year ago today, look where you were, and I'm so proud of you. So he'll follow up, and he's just an amazing doctor. He really is. So, so what is your so what has your life uh, been like after taking him out? It wasn't all it wasn't all like roses. I mean, you felt better and stuff like that. But then you went through the healing cycle. How long is that? How long have they been out now? Uh, they've been out. I got them out 2021. So two years. Yeah, two years. Is it two years? Two yeah. Years, yeah. July of 2021. Um, healing has been like this and it's sucked at a lot of points and it's been hard at a lot of points and it's been like, God, what's happening at a lot of points. When I reached out to you, it was one of those low dips, but in this crazy way, I don't think healing is ever, you get them out and you're great. Yeah. Not even, we're not even just talking about implants. I think healing in general, it's not this and you're great. You guys were talking about it live earlier. I was watching you as I woke up. It's this. It's life. There's going to be things that jump out at you. There's going to be things that pop out at you. There's going to be deaths in the family. There's going to be hard circumstances. It's never this and you're fine. It is always forever work. That's why we got to continue the work and, and work on ourselves daily to, to help ourselves because it's weathering the storm, not just getting rid of the storm. So now that yeah, you've had issues, so, so it also caused other issues. So, so there was eczema, there mm -hmm. were still some of the autoimmune symptoms that were still going because your body's still fighting the primary issue. Yeah. And that, that was the other thing. That's why I reached out to you too, because like I said, I've, I've addressed all the technical medical stuff that I could and the blood work and everything. And it's like, why is this eczema? Why is this insomnia? Why is this stuff anxiety? Why is this still going on? Um, right now and what can I do to help it? Because it was happening and kind of got really bad for the last couple months and it makes sense. It's, I mean, it's stress in my life, but it's what can I do to help my body? What more can I do to help my body go through healing? Not just on the physical level, because it's all tied in, it's all tied in. So, so we, so uh, you started doing the fascial maneuvers. You started taking some of the supplements to rehydrate, get the inflammation down. How long did it take for those changes to start to, for you to feel it? Because I mean, when I talked to you, you were at a low, at a low point. Right. I remember when we had gotten off our first Zoom of talking, I was like, I hope he doesn't post a picture of that because I look wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so wrecked. But I, it was like, uh, uh, let me think about this. It was, pro I mean, once I started doing, I think with the, the fascial, the maneuvers, it was slower. It was more emotional that I felt a relief and release, not just physically. Right. It was definitely emotional. And then when the emotional started feeling better, it just kind of snowballed into like hope. And once I had hope again of like, I'm not crazy. I can, my body can heal. I can help my body heal. It just, it's been this momentum of like faster and faster healing because it's working in tandem with the body now so, the, so that and and when you started doing the maneuvers like what do you mean the emotions like what do you could you identify the emotions were they was it was or just emotions releasing or was it like anger was it sadness was it 
I would say all of it, all of it. As you're stretching your chest, as you're opening up, opening up things, opening up the channels, giving my body phys physical space, created this emotional space in my body to open up, to let more in, to let more out, and created more flow. I don't know how to explain it. You're better at explaining it than I am, but it but you're, more I mean, you're, flow. You're, you're describing what you were living, and, yeah. and I, I, I mean, I went through it myself. So yeah. I'm, I love hearing your version of it because everybody has their own story. It's how you experienced it. Yeah, it just, it, it was, to me, they're so deeply intertwined. And when you're feeling super, super sick and downward spiraling, you emotionally feel that way too. And I was feeling both of those at once. I was telling Ryan, I'm like, I don't know. Like I was at such a low point. I was like, I don't know how I can continue this feeling like this. I cannot continue life feeling like this. Like I don't want to be, to be transparent. I was like, I, I can't, I can't live life like this. Like I don't want this and it was a hard spot to be in and so to me having them so closely intertwined the emotional and the physical i just needed some like hope i just yeah. needed hope that and then once you do it's like i don't know i I've, I've been working on it all together and releasing movements doing releasing stretches and techniques that you, you have it's doing a lot of somatic therapies it's it's opening my emotions up so much more and releasing you know it, it it's funny because you you have you you're a hundred percent different than when i first met you yeah <laughs> you're, you're a happy bubbly i can see you trying to be happy and bubbly through all of the dysfunction and pain but that mm -hmm. i can see that big change in such a short period of time yeah thank you so much it feels good and also truthfully to have somebody say like you're going to be okay when you don't know that you're going to feel be okay it's it's something beautiful to me and for somebody to say i believe in you and we're going to get through this having the human garage having you guys even you taking the time like you said you work with so many people saying come down here come visit with us come stay with us let's work on your body let's put hands on you like you just it's giving people somebody giving me hope that I'm going to be okay. And that's all most people want to hear and know is that like, I can be okay. Yeah. And that's, that's a big one. You know, like when I'm in that, because I've gone through lots of pain in my physical body. And um, when I knew I was going to be okay, there became a point where I just knew that I was going to be okay. But there were, even in the last four years of my transition, there was points where I didn't know I was going to be okay. There was a couple of points where I thought this might be it. I might not, I might not make it. And same. Yeah. And, and those little points, I mean, I believe everybody who's going through this health journey is going to have that at one point. And it's about having a community of people that are there saying, I've already done it. It's okay. You're going to live. You're going to make it. Yeah. And, and like I've been there. That, that's what the biggest thing about the community is for sure is hope and somebody to say, like, I know what you're going through. I, I've been there. I've 100% been there. Okay. So, um, uh, to wrap up here um and 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 also what i want to do is if like i said if you're okay with i'd like to open it up and have audience women come up and ask questions to you in the future of if you're course. okay with that. okay that i mean that's gonna be powerful because that is where that's that's where you can use your life experience to really really shine on people but your your impression meeting us first time i'm curious oh okay i, I just it felt like family it felt like family and I just love hanging out with you guys. I was telling you, I could be super, super, what not, not many people know about me is I could be super, super shy and like introverted and very like, even can kind of, maybe I feel like I come off like standoffish, but you guys were so warm and welcoming and like hugging and just, it was, I felt like it, I was hanging around family and just people who get it and don't judge me. Don't judge me for like, oh, you're Claire from The Bachelor and they expect a certain thing from me. It was like, you're just one of us. And I love that. <laughs> well, you you definitely fit in. I mean, while you're there, kids are running around, people are cooking, things and are happening. Like home. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that, that's the way we live our life. And, and you know what? I find that actually Human Garage itself, um, we, we built ourselves out of our garage into an apartment 
into a into a basically a big living room and into a ten million dollar home in Venice, and and we've we've kept that even with our properties here. It's just it's a community because that's where healing happens. Healing happens in that community aspect. It doesn't happen when we go to a clinic. No, and it's it's if anything, it's more isolating to go through so much medical stuff and feel alone and yeah. to have people to go. I'll help you through this. It's, it's it's beautiful. It's 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 what the world needs. I feel like it's what everybody needs because so many people are out there just feeling thick and hopeless and stuck. When you're in that low point, it's hard to reach out. It's hard to know where to go. So let's let's do this. Let's um let's let's come online. Let's bring up some women who have questions and real issues, and let's let's see your uh, doctor of this situation because that's who you are. Uh, let's see your 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 embodiment and your experience. And let you help them because you know at, at the end of it i have a lot of the knowledge and i even went through the surgery but i don't have the experience that you went through and that's what that's what really really wants to come out i yeah i would i would love to love to talk to women love to talk to people and share about it because yeah and help and pay it forward because for me it's i'm not a doctor i'm not claiming to know anything everything about it but i do know what i've been through i do know my experience i know what it's like to feel like you're dying inside and on the physical and on the emotional front of it. So happily to talk women through it and happily to give them hope for what life could feel like. And, be and maybe, maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll set it out and ask for some situations to come in advance. So we actually have some people that we can talk to that are really dealing with something and we want to yeah. help out too. So like we have, we have coaches and lifestyle artists all over the country who can actually some, meet with people um we'd be happy to like a lot of a lot of a lot of women i've already seen it in the, in the feed here uh, they can't get surgery they can't get payments for it i i i would like to actually be able to help and create some sort of fund and that helps women that 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 really need it i mean because because i can't imagine having it in my body not mm -hmm. having the money to have surgery insurance won't pay for it i can't get it out i can't i can't even imagine being in that trap it's awful. It's, yeah, and, and why insurance doesn't cover it? They don't even acknowledge that it's a sin. No, because if they acknowledge it, it it's sickness, then um, then what happens is, from a medical and a legal standpoint, it's a it's a it's an entourage. It's like everybody will come. It will literally they, they they would literally bankrupt the system. God forbid everybody wants to heal and get better. <laughs> Claire. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on and I look forward to talking to women in real time. That's going to be fun. That's going to be literally the joy of my life. I can't wait. Sam, thank you seriously for having me on. It was so good to see you too and like catch up with okay. you. Hey, take care, Claire. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. Uh, we're going to actually have Claire back and we're going to be having her come on live and talk to women in real time who are dealing with these issues. And these issues are everything from uh, from how you felt about it, how she felt about having to get them and why, what the emotions were around it, what some of the physical issues that went through some of the situations. Because I, I know it's a lone I know it's a lonely place to be when you can't get the help. And the community out there isn't really willing to help. So let's uh, let's let, this is gonna be a great time to have her come up and actually talk to individuals. We'll be putting it out. Uh, you'll be able to follow us. We'll be able to tell you exactly when. And we'll actually be uh, putting out some surveys looking for people to talk to and specifically. Okay, thank you all. Appreciate you. Have a really good day today. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for the AMA tomorrow. It's going to be a great one.